part two of our interview with the legendary George Lois. Now back to our host, Kevin Kelly, on the Buzz Bubble. So you talk about words. That was your life. How important are words? And um, that's a silly question to some degree. So if you have a message that has a tag tagline, you know, one word. For another word, you know? How no, no, but, but the, 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 talking about words is, I mean, I am by far, a, a, you know, I'm, a person where I've done more work than any artist that I've lived. You know, I mean, don't, don't look at me. I mean, I just, but uh, I am by far the art director who's most involved in writing and creating words and working with words in synergy with the, uh, with visuals. I mean, I'm a word-driven. Uh, you were the art, art guy. and I you tell know. kids, and and I tell everybody, anybody who uh, who's obviously in the advertising business or in, in, in communicating, that the words come first. When you mm. sit, when you have any kind of a problem, certainly not in advertising, I tell kids just think words. They say, "What? Don't you think you know, you're a great image? one? Don't you think in visual? No, no." I think words, and, and and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to come up with a slogan words that's catchy that somehow nails what I'm t what what, uh, what I'm the big idea I'm going after. Right. And I'll only go with that line if I can marry it with some kind of visual imagery, sure. so that the visual imagery so there's a visual imagery a, a mnemonic and there's a, a word mnemonic, you know, like you know you know Mick Jagger picking up the phone and saying I want. I want my MTV. So it's the action of picking up the phone, you know what I mean? Right, and, right. And, and that's what I that's look for. The brain. That's what everybody should be looking for. You, you, if you, if people who have um, been advertising pros all their lives, when they hear me say that, it's the first time they heard it. They go, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I talk to people who are. What? It works 30 years, and I say, well, that's an interesting approach. But that was also the model when you were growing up creatively, right? It was copy, and then they go into the art yeah. director's office, and here you go, make it, make, sure. make pictures. Sure, I mean, Burnback. But you were the uh, Burnback the revolution. It, 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 Burnback had the epiphany, uh, you know, when he was a young man, to work with Paul Rand, who was, uh, who was a great, uh, 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 just a great art director, a great designer. Uh, I'm talking about the 40s and 50s, and he, he didn't work with writers. He wrote his own copy and he did his own things. And he did great ads for Orbacks, et cetera, et cetera. And, Bur and Burnback was lucky enough to have go to a, an, an ad agency as a, he was went as, a, as the copy chief, I think. Okay. And uh, and and work with Burnback and, and, and work with Rand, try to work with Rand. He was right. he was a cantankerous son of a yeah. bitch. Oh, he was beautiful. <laughs> you know, and you walk, you know, I mean, I mean, he was just like my uh, And he he didn't take he didn't take any ship with anybody, and that's and that's how he got away with doing the work he did. You know, yeah. so somehow Burnback got had the epiphany, said, "Oh my God, if you work with a." A graphic designer who understands advertising, you can do better work, you know, duh. <laughs> yeah. But you the point is, it together, but, you know, right? but the point is, I mean, he understood that yeah, and yeah. started Doyle Dane Burnback based on that concept. So the only ad agency in the world that worked that way for ten, for nine ten years or more really? was Doyle Dane like Burnback. They, they was were like Dane the creative agency. Yeah, yeah. and everybody and and uh, every and they scared the hell out of everybody in the world because everybody in the world had, was a lousy agency compared to them. Right. You know, because how could they compete compete with uh, uh, with a, with a, 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 a you know, a terrific art director like Bob Gage working with a terrific writer like Phyllis Robinson, sure. and they did stuff that that not only was written well, but the, to put a terrific headline. But Bob Gage did, you know, was the first modern art director, did yeah. punchy stuff. So uh, and 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 that was it. They're the only creative agency in the world. Period. I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, you could say uh, other agencies. Yeah, Bo Ogilvy was did good ads once in a while. Yeah, but they once were. They, 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 but they didn't understand. I mean, Ogilvy tried to hire me for Christ's sake out of Doyle Day, and I laughed in his. I mean, I, I, I respectfully laughed in his face. You know, <laughs> I said, I said, I, I don't mean. What, I don't. I said, uh, Mr. Ogilvy, I don't. There's not a word in your. There's not a, a word in your book. Uh, you know, he wrote confessions over there. There's not a word in your book. I agree with. I mean, you got six thousand rules against a guy like me. He said, "Well, I guess you're right." Anyway, so, 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 for anybody that doesn't know, I mean, the, the, the creative revolution was 
uh, the fact that they put art directors and copywriters in the same room. Yeah. That, you know, no every shit. other agency, you wrote the copy, you walked downstairs, you said the art director would make that make some pictures. No, the, the, the writer, the writer, uh, and maybe with the, with the account guy, the was, writer, maybe with the account guy would come into oh, the, the and the art director too. sitting there, would, so the art director, he, the, the yeah, art he, he, he directed his finger with his nose, you know. Uh, they, they would come, they would throw the copy on the, on the art director's desk and say, make a layout. Yeah. I mean, that's what art direction was uh, before uh, Doyle Dane burned back, right? So, so did you, when you came into DDB, did they put you in a room with a copywriter, or, or was oh, that, yeah, oh, did, yeah. did no, that happen well, while you were Well, there? when I uh, worked, uh, before I went to Doyle Dane, uh, you, know, you know, when I worked at CBS, and then I worked at Southern Hands, I worked with, uh, with uh, I, I was the consumer art director at Herb, Herb Balance Agency, a great agency. Um, uh, th 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 there were writers there, but I didn't. I didn't want to work yeah, with them. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, didn't, I just didn't want to work with them. You know, I mean, well, I, 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 I had nothing to get. Yeah, I mean, you I got the words. You I, got. I, I got to figure it out. You know, I really. You are the creative. I, don't revolution. confuse me. <laughs> you know, yeah, you because know, you know, because usually, a, if you if you work with a really really good art uh, writer, in most cases, they'll come up with maybe some terrific lines, and you then have to explain to them, I don't want to use it because I can't marry it with any visuals. So, right, right. so it's not half bad, but it's not right yet. Go back and try again. You know what I mean? It would be a pain in the ass. Um, so, um, but at Doyle Dane Burnback, well, first day I was at Doyle Dane, first day I was at Doyle Dane, I get there, I'm there early in the morning. I had come that weekend, a couple of days, on a Saturday or Sunday, I guess, the day before, and I uh, brought in paint. I painted my the room they gave me. It was probably white when you showed yeah, up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I painted the room, and I bought my own furniture. And there was a requisition on the uh, on the table uh, you know, on Sunday uh, on, the, that I was supposed to see Monday morning on something I was supposed to work with and the right I was supposed to work with. And I took it home. I thought about it. I came in early the next morning, 6.30 in the morning. This is my first day at Doyle Day. And I immediately did, like, drew five ads, you know, it was for a carrot and earwax removal. Oh, yeah, I remember and, that. I, and, and, you know, and one of the ads was I, I drew a gigantic ear and I put pencils and stuff in that ear, you know, and I did, a, you know, I did a package design, uh, you know, uh, with, with an ear on, on both sides and the kids holding up. The, 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 and I did, so Burnback comes into my room at 9 o'clock in the morning. They, they greet me. It's greet me. And he says, uh, boy, they really fixed you up here. This room is beautiful. I said, yeah. And then look at the furniture they got you. Isn't that, isn't that Miss Vanderbilt? You know? I said, yeah, but I came in and painted it, painted the room and brought in my own furniture. How'd you, get, you? how'd you get in the building? I just I walked in. Walked in with a, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I paint. I just walked in. Well, you look like the yeah. Yeah, I look. I look like a painter. You know, uh, and 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 then he and then he looks at the floor, uh, and then he sees on the floor there's all kinds of layouts. You know, tissue paper. And he said, "What? What did he? What did he say?" I said, the "Campaign I'm working on. I, I worked on for carrot. It's an earwax." Remove and he said, "I know what carrot is. I got the account. You know what I mean?" I thought, oh, right. And he and he looks at the you know, like the ear and he went, "What is it? This is remarkable." And look at and the headline, "Who you? Who's your writer?" I said, I, "There's no writer. I I, I did it yesterday and I brought it in. This, you know, I, I did the edge this morning actually." I'll be a writer," he said to me. He, <laughs> really? he did. Yeah, he did. Wow. And I, I and I never took him up with it because I, I didn't want to be the teacher's you pet. Well, or you know, piss him I off. I didn't want to be the teacher's pet. But the you point didn't is, get but, along with your copywriters. But, uh, well, uh, no, I mean I don't get along with copywriters who are constipated, you know. And a lot of them there were. Yeah. And a lot of them, the cup took some of them were terrific. But a lot of them came in and, uh, you know, I said, instead of doing this, I wanted to do, no, instead of doing a full page ad, I wanted to do like 30 small page ads and put it, you know, I had to, I said, no, 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 you don't understand, George. What don't I understand? At Doyle Dane, Burnback, back, we don't do small ads. You know, people like that, I say, get the fuck out of my room, you know. <laughs> yeah, we, we go through that in our agency at Big Buzz. We, you know, 
programmers are in an department and creatives in an department and then we have the social and the online and yeah. we're actually we no, everybody got the, the everybody, walls everybody got the rules and regulations and you know together more ideas yeah. come but yeah, getting back to talking coming. about words i mean i'm word driven you know right, i mean right. i as an art director i'm as an, I'm, I'm, art, I'm an art director you know I mean, people look at my uh, uh, esquire cover and say, well you didn't do words and i said well i do once in a while but i mean uh, yeah, I mean, I, I ain't looking to knock people out with words on a, as a, on a cover. I'm looking for people to glance and see Whoa. Muhammad Ali with Al, uh, Saint Sebastian. You know? yeah. Then I then I write the Passion of, of Muhammad Ali. You right, know, right. just a little line. But uh, you know, once in a while, I, I did a cover. You know, that said uh, on the story cover that said, "Oh my God, we we, we hit a little girl," which is an anti-war cover. You know, which. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, but no, I think words all the time, all the time. I tell and you tell young kids that in schools. You know what I mean? And they're not told that. Mm -hmm. Except, I mean, I, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving young people, especially people in advertising or designers, uh, such advice. <laughs> I mean, they say to me, "Well." Yeah, after after I do her lecture, like I gave three lectures last week, you know, at Pratt, C uh, CCNY, and, uh, and SVA, and they, have, they say, well, how can we, how can, do you have any advice for, 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 for young creative? And I say, ah, read the motherfucking book. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it's 100, there are 120 goddamn things. That's what I'm gonna say, you know, it's 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 formatted. I, mean, I busted my ass to make it concise and right. sharp. Lesson you know? one, lesson two, lesson 150. You know, yeah. Whatever we had, 100, 100 yeah. and and you can't and you can't pick and choose the ones the lessons that they're gonna. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Uh, 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 one kid said uh, the other day said, uh, uh, "Gee, I I, I love the Lord. I love them all, um, but you know that number, whatever it was, where you say you." Never work for bad people. I said, yeah. Uh, well, I don't think that's advice you should be giving to people or to ad agencies because, you know, if you if you're stuck and you have to work with some bad people and maybe they're for bad clients, and if you fire them, if you get rid of them, people lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. I said, well, that's the big. That's the way. That's why agencies suck, and that's why. Art directors who want to be great or never will never be great because right, right. you because you work for bad people who force you to do bad work. So that's strike one, strike two, and strike three. Don't you understand? <laughs> right. well, I just talked to you about twenty minutes. I, to, I, I talked about courage. Part of courage is that you throw a goddamn client out if they if they if it doesn't work, and you get the hell out of a place if if they if the if the people there are forcing you to do bad work. I mean, you find well, what what do you, what do you do? I said you go, you find you find to find another motherfucking job. That's I right. mean, I, I I I can't you know this isn't easy. I go, and that's not rocket science. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not, not easy. It's not, I mean, the minute you give, when, when the you minute you give in, in the, the minute you give in, in, you know, I mean, if, if if when Birnbach had his agency, if he gave in, and some clients were there trying to force people to do bad work, uh, he would have thrown them out. Mm. I'm sure he did. I, you know, I, I mean, he he wouldn't, he wouldn't too, let right? he wouldn't let a, an art director team, an art directing copy team, work and have their their work beaten to shit. You know, yeah. and, and 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 feel that he had a great agency. You know, most great sure. creative shops have a story or two about firing a client. Yeah, yeah. People say, "Oh, to the lowest was really tough on so many clients." Yeah, no shit. That's it for part two with the legendary George Lois. Tune in next week for part three. He said, uh, he said, uh, no, they want, they want to post, they won't pull a commercial. So I got in, I got on the phone. I said, I said, well, who, who, I said, hey, Dan, uh, it's, uh, son, hey, Dan, you don't understand the president's been shot. He said, shit, I know that. We're having a party down here. Wow. And I said, well, we're pulling the commercials, and you can go fuck yourself. Next week on the Buzz Bubble.